beautiful. I hope you enjoyed and understand the theological significance of all these things. It's very, it's very important to have a good knowledge of the Old Testament. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know. So I, I explained to you the concept of this, which is somewhat important to understand, the collective singular and the absolute singular. I explained the signing. That's, I found it on the internet yesterday. I loved it, So because you cannot, you need painting. And in some pictures, they cut the animal this way, which is basically not the way you cut an animal. Okay? And then we carry on. So before I click anymore, we carry on with some information. We are on verse 17 and 18 here. The Abrahamic covenant was never rendered void. I carry on with my own notes right now. This is just make it. I, I gave you with my pieces of paper the proper illustration of these things. The Abrahamic covenant was never made void. Still very much in effect, Karen, you nailed it. It's an eternal and unconditional covenant. Now, I gave you this also, I think. Okay. The law came 430 years later. It's based upon Exodus chapter 12, verse 40. I'm going to read it for you. Exodus chapter 12, verse 40. Reads as follow. Now, the time that the sons of Israel lived in Egypt was 430 years. So, they went at the foot of Mount Sinai. That's why Abraham Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph were never under the Mosaic law. The law came later, okay? And we know from a book called the Seder Olam, number three, the 430 years goes from Genesis 15 that I just explained to you to the Exodus. It's one view of seeing it. Seder means order and Olam means word. So the order of the, wor of the world that's what it means, Seder Olam, book three. Simply put, they calculate the 430 years from Genesis chapter 15 to the Exodus. It's not important, but I like to give it to you. And concerning justification, the Abrahamic covenant had prior priority over the law. The promise has priority over work. that justification would come by faith. And what Sue read in 15, it's the, verse 4, I think, and it was reckoned unto him as righteousness. He never worked, he believed. And the law of Moses never annulled the original. The law of Moses, what we call the Mosaic Covenant, never made void the original, which is the Abrahamic Covenant. Let's read verse 18 of Galatians chapter 3. That's where we are. Galatians chapter 3. That was still in Genesis. Genesis chapter 3, verse 18, reads as follows. For if the, the inheritance is based on law, it is no longer based on the promise, but God has granted it to Abraham by means of promise. So simple. The gift is the gift of justification based on faith, or salvation based on faith. Now that he has made that point, come with me, you can write it down. Now that Paul made that point, which point, Francois? That the law never canceled the Abrahamic covenant. That's the point he made. He just made it very strong. Now that he has made that point, that the Mosaic law never, render, render, ne never rendered the Abrahamic covenant null or void, the question is, 
Why the law then? Why the law? One way to answer that question is to go back to your nine purposes of the Mosaic Law that I gave you, the half-pager, but I will answer that another way right now, somewhat another way, by reading 19 to 22. Come with me 19 to 22. Look at the question. Now that he has made the point that the Mosaic Covenant never rendered never annulled the Mosaic law, why the law then? It was added, circle added, because of transgressions, having been ordained through angels, circle angels, by the agency of a mediator, circle mediator, until, circle carefully until, circle seed would come whom the promise had been made. Now, a mediator, circle mediator, is not for one party only, whereas God is only one. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? May it never be. For if the law had been given which was able to impart life, then righteousness would indeed have been based on the law. But the scriptures... Scripture has shut up everyone under sin so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Whew. Verse 19, I ask you to circle the word added. And the word added too often is neglected. If I add something, it had a definite beginning. So the law was added, so it came at the point of time, at the starting point. Meaning, it was not always operative. Adam and, uh, Adam and Eve, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Job, was never under the Mosaic law. It came at a point of beginning, the exodus of Israel. Why the law then? It's written in the text. Because of transgression. In verse 19. Transgressions. Why the law then? It was given because of transgression. To show what is sin. To show what is sin. Romans 3.20 I'll do it. You, you know, you're right. Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Listen. Why the law then? Always my same childlike, childlike allegory, or uh, not allegory, um, picture, uh, yeah, maybe an allegory. The speed limit on the road. All of you drive a car today, or if you don't drive one, you're sitting on the back seat. If you go in a school zone, it's 30. So the sign that they put them 30, that the city of Duncan, 30, that's the law. And you look at it and you realize that you're too fast. Why the law then? Because of transgression, Sylvie. You're too fast. You see the law, it convicted her. Need to slow down. Okay, Romans 3, 20. Because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. For through the law, you read the text and you say, that doesn't make sense. 520 of the same book. Romans chapter 5 verse 20. This is probably my favorite. The law came in. Had it. It came to a point of time. So that the transgression would increase. But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. 
Yes, I'm going too fast all the time. I cannot take my foot out of the gas pedal. You recognize this, François? Yes, I do. I never do 30. Rely on me with my grace. I will give you grace. And then together we'll slow down. By myself. Ain't working. Nineteen B back to Galatians. Galatians chapter three, nineteen B. I'm going to read the whole thing. Why the Lord in was added because of transgressions having been ordained to angels. That's what I want for right now. Having been ordained to angels by the agency of a mediator. Now I want to emphasize on until. Ah, so it's not eternal. Added, added, until. <laughs> so that's why the law of Moses is conditional. And the word that I want, temporary. It was added in a period of time. And until the seed would come to whom the promise has been made. The law came to an end at the death of Christ. Yeah, but the Ten Commandments. The law came to an end when Christ was crucified. Yeah, but uh, how about the Sabbath? The law came to an end with the death of Christ. The two key words added until emphasis of until temporary I will stay with you this morning until 12 I came here temporarily I never told you when I arrived 430 years ago maybe but I stay with you this morning until so meaning you remain in classroom temporarily as much as you. Abraham in covenant never come to an end. How temporary until the seed come. And the seed culminates or culminated. Abraham in your seed Seed is a Isaac. It's an immediate seed. Out of your loins, Isaac. Oh, man, that's the seed concept. Then Isaac begat, and Jacob begat the 12 tribes of Israel. And within the 12 tribes of Israel, you have a tribe called? Judah. Oh, Judah. The Messiah is the tribe from? culminating of the seed concept until the seed comes. Okay? Now, we read 19 and 20 together, and then I have something to explain to you. Why the Lord end was added because of transgression, having been ordained to angels by the agency of a mediator, until the seed would come to whom the promise had been made. Now a mediator, so-called a mediator, is not for one party only, whereas God is only one. Okay? Go back to 19 and circle once again angels, mediator. That's what I want to have right now. I will explain to you by means of PowerPoint that you may picture something. I would like to give you a key words here right now. It's distancing. Distancing. I want to attract your... Now what I'm going to do a third time to, in order not to, not to insult you, but I'm going to read it again, 19 and 20. Why the law then? It was added because of transgression. Now this is what I want right now. Having been ordained to angels by the agency of a mediator 
until the seed would come to whom the promise had been made. Now, a mediator is not for one partly only, whereas God is only one. So that's what I want, that's what I did prepare for you right now. We have two parties being involved right now in the context. Two parties, make a note of this, and two mediators. Two parties and two mediators. The first party is God. Then, between God and Israel came Israel. So that's the two party that you have right now. Just draw it very rapidly. You have two parties. They are on the screen right now in gray. And the law came in between. Now I'm going to address with you the two mediators. And I want you to notice the distancing. So what I'm going to do to help you, I will copy that on the board. Just to help you, God, law, and Israel. Why Israel? Because the law not given to Gentiles. Okay? Now, that's the two parties. I think it's simple to understand. One party is God. When you go to the restaurant, they ask you, a party of what? Here we have a party of two. Then this. Okay, you notice what's going on here. We have God. Now we need to discover our two mediators, verses 19 to 20. We go and we discover them. One mediator are the angels. Because the law was ordained by angels. Right here. What the scriptures that says that the law was ordained by angels, from God to angels, Acts chapter 7, 53, and Hebrews 2, 2. I let you verify that by yourself. So you have God, and basically here, you have the law, but the law was given through the agency of angels. So the law went from God, to angels, we don't know the quantity, which serve as a mediator between the law, Moses if you want, and God. And then you have another mediator, Moses, that serves as a mediator between the law and Israel. Notice something, the distance. God is removed from Israel twice. Notice this. So you, I need a, a, a bigger board here because I need to push God twice up. Therefore, distancing God from Israel by two mediators that came. Angels and Moses. And then Israel come down and God goes apart. So because of these mediators and so on. And Israel. Okay? So God is removed away from the second party twice. Because of angels and because of Moses that was making a work of intercession for Israel. Now, we go to that place. Under grace, that's what happened here. You have God, and you have one mediator, not between Israel only, but between men, Jews and Gentiles together. So under grace, we shrink the picture. God came closer to man, but it happens that the one that does the mediation in between is God himself. So you get closer. What's the point of being willing to return to the law? You distance yourself. That's why the temple was a copy of it. Only of holies. Okay, for the priests only. Holy, of, uh, holy, holy place. Then there is a curtain. You, nobody can get in the holy place. Another veil. 
Another veil to enter the Holy of Holies. The Gentiles, gent outside. Women, outside. It's a bunch of divisions under the law. Under grace, it's God. And it happens that the mediator is also God. How much closer? It's on that basis, beloved online also, that you can call your father daddy. You cannot call him daddy if you place yourself back to the law. The relationship is too distant. It's to place yourself again under a tutor in grade one. You remember those, did you, the older people here, have you remembered having a slap of a ruler from your teacher? Good, the slap is the law. Why can you go to that directly? Because of the age of grace. He is also your mediator and high priest. Those who want to go back to law, they go back to a distancing with God, keeping the people in immaturity. Maturity comes by confessing your weakness to dad. Later on, I hope that Sophia will come to me, dad, I have a problem. She goes to dad with the problem. And if we have a good relationship, she will trust me to tell me the truth. Not under the law. Under the law, it's to keep the people in immaturity. That's the best work I could do with Olga to give you an illustration of 19 and 20. God cannot see mankind outside of Christ. That's why the law was not intended to make anything perfect. It was a black... Lee, what was your first TV? About that big, three channels, tack, 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 with the fine tuning, uh, because you, 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 while you were watching hockey, there was about 17 pucks. Unless you break a hanger and you put an antenna on it. That's the Mosaic Law. The Law of Grace, it's TV, that thin. Not on shock cable anymore, but fiber optic. Where you can see the booger in the nose of the third person in baseball on the top row. You can see that the person has lack sleep. That's the dispensation of grace. What else can I explain than this? Galatians. That's your mediator. Is the Messiah himself. Don't need to go to Moses. We cannot see that. There is a Shekinah glory on top of Sinai. We don't want to see that anymore. We're scared. The very Shekinah glory that was residing on Mount Sinai that scared the people is in you now. Are you scared? I know you are. COVID and stuff. But you're not scared of the Shekinah, are you? So it's way, way more embraceable, way more closeness under the dispensation of grace. And it goes back to my famous this. Now I need to undo all this. Tick, 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 tick. It doesn't matter. This is Olga that did that to me, but it's, I go, because she said you will be able to explain in between, and she was. The bird is coming back. This is not the black bird of Genesis chapter 15, by the way. It goes back to this. Moses is in a visionary sleep, but he's close anyway. I take upon myself the responsibility. I walk among the pieces. Abraham was just very close to this. He made a covenant with Abraham based upon the faith. And the Mosaic law is no longer operational. We are under the Abrahamic covenant and we are a son of Abraham, not by nationality, because of the faith. You are Abraham's follower. It is absolutely priceless. We finish. I finish the study in, in a moment of time. But faith, God is directly involved. 
by faith, God is directly involved. I, won't, I don't want to go back. It's too much clicking. Because the mediator is God. The God man. Simply put the sphere of faith is superior. Those behind the TV, I'm just writing the word superior. The sphere of law is what's the end what's the antithesis of a superior inferior go back to your list of the nine purposes of the law verses 21 to 22 we finish with this we finish that segment right now come is the Lord in contrary to the promises of God? May it never be. For if a law had been given which was able to impart life, then righteousness would indeed have been based on the law. But the scriptures, or the law also, has shut up everyone under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who works. No, no, it says works in mind. Thank you so much to correcting me. I wanted to know. It's so those who believe. So the law does not, does not basically contradict faith. It's simply two spheres of operation. The law does not contradict faith. It's two spheres of operation. Because when you read the law, nobody is capable of keeping it. So basically it shuts the three categories of people, the Gentiles, the Jews, and the uncultured Gentiles under sin. The best for, verse for this, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Everybody falls short. So the law shuts everybody under sin so that faith and grace will abound. It's by faith. And what's the power of it? It's the spirit abiding. The only reason why you can love a French Canadian like me is because you have the early, Holy Spirit abiding in you. That's why you love me. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, 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 the only spirit that abides in you that helps you, more correctly said, to help you to love the most unlovable person or the most unlovable Christian sometimes that turn you off. It's a tool for keep, keep, keeping the commandments of the law, and it is possible not of the law. It's a tool to keep the commandments of the law of liberty, the law of Christ, which the law did not provide, the law of Moses. It's because of the abiding capacity. The universal abiding of the Holy Spirit was not given to everyone under the law. So nobody was enabled to keep it. Quite the opposite. So the law made clear the fact that salvation is by grace through faith in the Messiah. That's the sphere of faith. The law made clear the fact that salvation is by grace through faith in the Messiah. Francois, I've also put down, I find that the Holy Spirit also helps me with my faith and understanding. It's an absolute. It is an absolute. Between, between, right beside understanding, right illumination. Right. When in your mind of what she said, the, 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 the technical word, I always like the technical words, the work of the Holy Spirit that is done today nowadays is the work of illumination. Meaning, when you are concentrating on making notes and there is a ticking in your mind and heart, wow, I like it. Because you know, the one that is telling you that you are hearing the truth is not me. It's the Holy Spirit in you telling you, ay, 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 I love this. And it's not seen. Sometimes it's seen by a, uh, uh, amen, okay? But you can remain completely silent and you like to write because there is a light going on, illumination, a ting, 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 ting. No doubt, I love it. You love it because it's the Holy Spirit telling you, Record that is the truth that you hear right now. I am done for today.
So you owe me 15 minutes. <laughs> God bless you. Uh, John, would you, would you mind doing a short prayer, bro?